Hi, my name is Stefan and I work at Susquehanna International Group. And since it's Wednesday, I feel that it's time that we ask, Dad, are we there yet? That's just the legalese. So what I'm really going to talk about is uh, good old 593 that managed to reach revision 6 by the time that uh, at the end of uh, the final meeting before everything shut down uh, was just about pulled through um, the, um, the final hurdles and actually made it into the standards. And it's a wonderful piece of illustration that we shouldn't be scared of undefined behavior because if it's a problem, we just say that it isn't a problem and the problem goes away. And we'll see this here. So what it, this does, in short, from the abstract, is that it basically allows objects to be defined as necessary within newly allocated storage to remove any traces of undefined behavior that was there because there weren't objects there before. So what is, how, what is it really doing? Well, it disallows UB. To do that, um, it, does, um, it comes up with a new type in, in the standard, um, the implicit lifetime type. Um, you can think of it sort of as... Um, bit buckets of bits, but obviously there's more language to go along with that. Uh, the other thing that changes as a result of this in C++, well, actually from, it was done, I believe, as a DR, so it goes back all the way to C++11 and changes C++11, um, is that pseudo-destructors now end the lifetime of the object that you're ending, that you're coming out from. It used to be that if a pseudo-destructor was there, the object had infinite lifetime. <laughs> so, this is the detail of how it's all done. Um, and basically what it comes down to is saying, if, 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 if using uh, initialized memory of various kinds from various functions would have caused undefined behavior, it no longer causes undefined behavior, it's now perfectly fine. Uh, there's, of course, little bits of fine print to do with sub-objects of objects that are thus magically created, and they have to make be sure to be created in copy-move constructors and move assignments. The difference being that for copy-move assignments, there is the caveat that it's not going to create objects if the source and the target are the same, because the object already exists. Um, allocators um, will now magically create an object for you uh, if there wasn't one there previously so that you can dereference a pointer into newly allocated memory and that's fine and of course c everybody uses malloc calloc align alloc and realloc not to mention memcopy and memmove so that now when you load your file and you dereference a pointer of your known type of what those bits really represent, it's perfectly legal to dereference that pointer because the object is there. Uh, Bitcast, the same thing there. So what are these magical implicit lifetime types that al allows this to happen? Well, it's uh, an aggregate and has at least one trivial eligible constructor and a trivial non-deleted destructor, so that it's possible to start and end the lifetime of the object trivially. So there's nothing to be done, so it might as well just have been deemed to occur in the first place. Um, there's also the details on the pseudo-destructor, just to make sure that these implicit lifetime types actually end their lifetime when the uh, non-deleted trivial destructor is called. Uh, unfortunately, there is still no direct object creation. Um, the paper hasn't been written for start lifetime as. And finally, yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs>